is the fact that we don't make observation remember in bible interpretation one of the major things is observation that's why when we teach in power city and you know among our churches we take time to explain in details a misinterpretation of the scripture can birth a whole denomination there are many churches that are built on a misinterpretation of the scripture it's important to know that a scripture can be misunderstood and a denomination can be built out of a misunderstood scripture now we have settled the fact that antichrist is plural that should change the way you think because if you are thinking of one world ruler that will control all the world you are thinking nollywood or hollywood or bollywood because that's not bible bible doesn't have one man that will control the whole world what the bible has is plural for antichrist i have also said to you that god communicates with us in words words we have to pay attention to words the entire revelation of god is given to man via the instrumentality of words look at matthew 24 verse 5 for many shall come in my name saying i am christ and shall deceive many look at what jesus did not say notice again jesus didn't use one single person he said many shall come he didn't say one person shall come and he explains himself he said many will come in my name and he refers to them as false prophets verse 24 of matthew 24 for there shall arise false christs false christs and false prophets all plural and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect so again does jesus use plural or singular plural so you see it's plural not singular person so the word pseudo prophets false pseudo prophets jesus didn't say antichrist jesus used pseudo christ john used antichrist jesus used false christs pseudo christ all right now please pay attention pseudo christ is a deceiver then he uses pseudo prophets antichrist is to oppose pseudo christ is to deceive notice the difference antichrist to oppose pseudo christos to deceive false christ is to pretend like you are antichrist is to oppose so false christ deceive pretend antichrist oppose pseudo to pretend anti to oppose are they the same are they the same to pretend and to oppose are they the same no all right now oppose will mean to go against so was john and jesus saying the same thing were they saying the same thing pseudo christ anti-christ pseudo christ deceive anti-christ oppose were they saying the same thing no okay false prophet is different from antichrist now while jesus said the false christ and false prophets there will be lying signs and wonders in jesus's context john doesn't talk about that while the focus of the false prophets and false christ is signs and wonders the focus of the antichrist is not signs and wonders false prophets false christ will use a lot of magic a lot of signs and wonders to wow people and blow them away but antichrist will not use signs and wonders first john chapter 2 verse 19 they went out from us but they were not of us for if they had been of us they would no doubt have continued with us but they went out that they might be made manifest 
that they were not all of us. Look at verse 18 of that chapter. Little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now, are there many Antichrists? Whereby we know that it is the last time. Verse 19. They went out from us. They are not coming from a sky somewhere. They've been among us. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they will no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us so they went out from among us look at verse 20 but you have an unction from the holy one and you know all things what is the all things that you know that is referring to that is you will identify them you know all these things these things look at verse 22 and 23 of first john chapter 2 who is a liar but he that denieth that jesus is the christ he is antichrist that denieth the father and the son 23 whosoever denieth the son the same had not the father but he that acknowledged the son had the father also who is antichrist antichrist denies jesus christ he denies jesus christ he also denies the father go to verse 26 of first john 2 these things have i written unto you concerning them that seduce you to seduce means to lure to lure he calls the person a liar so the antichrist will falsify the facts of scripture they will they will they are plural the antichrist will falsify the facts of scripture that is he will misrepresent christ that is he will misrepresent the facts and the christ will misrepresent christ he will misrepresent the facts so what facts will he misrepresent the word to deny is a compound word in the greek anonai a-r-n-e-o-n-a-i anonai it means to disown it means to contradict it's an active tense anonai it means to disown it means to contradict is an active tense that is antichrist must be contradicting a certain fact must be contradicting a certain fact the antichrist will contradict a certain fact you know there are certain things you can contradict because you are ignorant a man can say i don't believe i am delivered even though i am born again i need deliverance that doesn't make him an antichrist that just means he's ignorant okay some christians are just ignorant or some who don't know that they're eternally saved so they keep saying you can lose salvation the fact that somebody says you can lose salvation doesn't make him an antichrist it just means he's ignorant therefore he keeps himself in bondage and never enjoys the joy that salvation brings now those are not vital we can disagree on that for example Peter and the apostles were talking about circumcision in chapter 15 of Acts as a condition for salvation. Yet nobody called them Antichrist. So what are the people contradicting? Because it must be very important. There's something these people contradict. What exactly do they deny by misrepresenting the facts? that is what are they twisting what facts are they twisting go back again to first john chapter 4 verse 1 beloved 
believe not every spirit but try the spirits whether they are of god because many false prophets are gone out into the world pay attention to verse 2 hereby know ye the spirit of god every spirit that confesseth that jesus christ is come in the flesh is of god next verse and every spirit that confesseth not that jesus christ is come in the flesh is not of god and this is that spirit of antichrist whereof you have heard that it should come and even now already is it in the world so what is the fact that the antichrist will contradict the humanity of jesus the antichrist will teach against the humanity of jesus the antichrist will teach that jesus was never born into this earth that jesus was never a man that is one of the fundamental things that the spirit of antichrist will twist the fact of the incarnation and make the incarnation not sound real that's the first fact very fundamental notice jesus is come in the flesh that is the deity and the humanity so the spirit of antichrist will teach against the humanity of christ and by implication it will also teach against the deity of christ now it's either it will deny the humanity or it will deny the deity of christ or it will deny the humanity and the deity either of them is antichrist either of them is antichrist antichrist is a teaching is not a world ruler is a mindset is a teaching that opposes christ anti anti something that is against christ is a teaching that denies the humanity of christ or the deity of christ if i say i come in the flesh what was i before so to say that christ is come in the flesh means he was god so if you oppose his humanity automatically you have opposed his deity see that you have opposed his deity so far so for jesus to come in the flesh means he pre-existed as deity that means anyone that distorts those facts will be called an antichrist anyone that distorts those facts will be called an antichrist so can you see that the fact of jesus humanity and deity is so vital to christianity the humanity and the deity of christ is fundamental to christianity it's not about prosperity healing we can agree, disagree on all of that we can disagree on whether women's hair should be short or long we can disagree on whether women should wear trousers to the church or not we can disagree on whether pastors should wear suits or wear natives all those are non-essentials those are they, they don't they are not worth wasting time on but by the time we start looking at the facts of redemption if you deny that jesus is god or you deny that jesus is a man then you and i have no basis of meeting that's why certain organizations and you know i don't like calling names certain organizations accept that jesus is a baby but reject that jesus is god that's antichrist some other organizations accept that jesus is god and he cannot be a man that is antichrist other religions believe that jesus is a prophet he cannot be god that religion is antichrist so antichrist is not a person is a teaching in a particular religion or in a particular organization that attacks 
the humanity or the deity of Christ or both of them. That is antichrist and it has been around. It's not coming. It's been around. And don't forget they were among us. So they speak our language but they attack fundamentally the deity or humanity of Christ. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. Any group that denies the deity or humanity they are not Christians. Even if they call themselves Christians, they are not. It's open, it's clear from scripture. Both of them, both the humanity and the deity of Christ must be affirmed before we can attest to the fact that you are of God. That's the fact. Look at verse 2 again of that first John chapter 4. Hereby know ye, know ye, hereby, this is how you know the spirit of God. Are you following? Is it in your Bible? Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Look at verse 3. Hey and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. This is that spirit of Antichrist that confesses. And that's the word homologio. Homologio means to say it from your heart. To say it from your heart. That is something you believe in your heart. Some who does not believe in his heart that Christ is God or believe that Christ is not a man, that person is Antichrist. So Antichrist is a teaching in people. Is a teaching that has entered people and created in them a belief system that opposes Christ. Anyone with such a belief system that opposes the deity and humanity of Christ is Antichrist. The teaching is what produces Antichrist. The teacher and the taught. Both the teacher and the taught. Because when the taught are taught and they embrace it, they oppose Christ. Both the teacher and the taught. That is why you can't afford to just listen to any preacher anyhow. He must be subject to the authority of scripture. And scriptures must be well explained. Spirit that do not believe that Jesus has come in the flesh. That word in the Greek is the word esekomai. Esekomai. It means to come into. That is, deity has come into humanity. Deity has entered humanity. Has come in the flesh. Deity has become a man. You must acknowledge it. So, the humanity of Christ, which I've been teaching for two weeks now, is so vital to the gospel. Any faith that sees Jesus as a prophet, is not of God. Any faith that doesn't see Jesus as God is not of God. Those groups are anti-Christ. Some of you know all of us are serving this God, same God. Ah, we are not all serving the same God. We are not all serving the same God. My God is Jesus Christ. That is my God. My God is Jesus Christ. And this Jesus Christ, my God, is a man. We are not all serving the same God. Leave that in. <laughs> we are not all serving the same God. My God is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, my God, is a man. Is it getting clear? So, he says, if you deny both the divinity and humanity of Christ... You are antichrist. Look at 2 John chapter 1 verse 7. For many deceivers are entered into the world. Who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. So brother John calls them deceivers. So stop looking for antichrist that has a long horn. You can spot antichrist in their writings, in their books, in their magazines. You can spot Antichrist in books that are published. Antichrist can be seen preaching on television. 
radio or social media that's where to find antichrist because antichrist is a spirit antichrist is a spirit in a message antichrist is a spirit in a message that's why you must be careful when listening to a message to ensure that it aligns contextually with scripture that's why it says believe not every spirit so the antichrist is that which denies the facts of the gospel that christ died he was buried on the third day he rose and that christ is god who became a man those are the facts of the gospel come to first john chapter 5 verse 1 whosoever believeth that jesus is the christ is born of god and everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him it talks about jesus begotten of him so the flesh is not just physical body the flesh is his human nature that's the fact of the gospel so a message a teaching a preaching a teaching a preaching a song a message that denies either the divinity or humanity of christ or both is an antichrist message Ayabada. what about churches that worship the mother of jesus beyond jesus and do not believe that jesus is god antichrist antichrist look at luke 24 when jesus rose from the dead hear his words his humanity is so critical he had to prove it those folks who saw him three and a half years knew that he was a man they touched him they held him it was so vital he had to prove it he cried he was tired he sat down he slept and snored they had to wake him up his humanity was so important because that's fundamental when he rose from the dead he told them handle me he showed them his hand they said no he said give me something to eat they gave him fish he ate he sat among them he dwelt with them for 40 days to prove that i was a man before i died i'm a man after i rose because the humanity of christ is fundamental that is where identification comes once you miss that you have no gospel to preach that's the core of the gospel that's the core but when he died they had a problem with the fact that he was risen they were not sure he was the same person so what did jesus do look at luke 24 37 but they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit 38 uh, and he said unto them why are you troubled and why do thoughts arise in your heart 39 uh, behold my hands and my feet that it is i myself handle me and see for a spirit i'm not a spirit i'm a human being for a spirit had not flesh and bones as you see me have verse 40 and when he had thus spoken he showed them actually the greek of that show means he undressed he removed his clothes so that the one thing cloth was covering he was he he was bare before them so that they can feel him that's how important it was for the humanity of christ to be proven after resurrection jesus was particular to prove to them that he was human you know he rose again human and when he came back he came back human because he came as a man died as a man buried as a man rose as a man ascended to heaven as a man god who became a man his humanity is tangible he said touch me they touched him and he was normal jesus rose from the dead spirit soul and body so if we identified with jesus it means we are identified with jesus spirit soul and body